Hi there, I'm Michelle Beatty, a professional development strategist, a PMP certified program manager, and the creator of Skills Recharge. The Skills Recharge conversation recently continued during the Add Your Sauce episode on my podcast, Career Tipper. You can listen to the episode on your favorite podcast platform. You can also watch the episode on Spotify or YouTube. During the episode, I encourage listeners to add their sauce to their resumes, professional development communication, and conversations while networking with recruiters, allies, decision makers, and mentors. Our skills go through levels of development and aha moments that can sometimes require the rework of lessons we have not mastered and repeat possibly more than once for reasons that range from communication development, exposure to differing opinions, and knowledge building to increase efficiency and credibility. Your ability to train and be trainable that can continue to position you to add valuable commentary to the tables that you sit at, and the list can go on and on. I enjoy watching competitive cooking shows. During conversations with clients, colleagues, and peers, I sometimes discover them shrinking back and identifying and confidently owning the skills that make them the subject matter experts of their industry or niche. In those moments, I remind them to add their sauce. Confidently speaking, posting, and promoting their hard, soft, technical, and transferable skills is essential. Chefs often boast about their sauce and how its savory flavor impacts the dish and overall visual appeal. Your skills and expertise are the sauce that companies, big and small, need. We have to package up our skills nicely, continually, and intentionally. Just like the satisfying taste of a flavorful, savory sauce awakens taste buds, your skills, once strategically placed on display through all forms of your professional communication, like a sauce on a plate, can prove to be the strong contributor that it is the right hire to meet the needs of a program or project. I love a good acronym. And during the episode, I provided the breakdown of my latest professional development acronym, SAUCE, to help you keep your skills recharged, competitive, and hire ready. Today, I'm expounding on the money line and positioning yourself to win at work on the money line for your employer or business shared in Dallin Vanderpool's book, No Boss, Only Clients. I am zoning in on S and add your sauce for strategizing your money line alignment. Understanding where your skill set aligns with the money line will help you strategize which skills you need to sauce up and develop or heighten how you showcase them. During episode one of Money and Skills with Dallin and Michelle on my podcast, Career Tipper, former accountant and investment banker, Dallin Vanderpool and I chatted about mapping your skills and determining how your skills align with the money line. Check out this clip of Dallin outlining the money line in a company. So this is where it comes in. You know, I, I wrote an, a, a blog post uh, that I got a decent amount of attention uh, a couple, like a year or a year and a half ago. It ended, up, it ended up in my book, No Boss, Honey Clients. And it's talking about this concept called the money line, right? And this is what, this is the way, I, this is how I see companies. I have gotten over, and this is the background of this, by the way, comes from me being an auditor first, working with like Ernst & Young, BDO, you know, being the auditor for major companies, then moving over into the banking world. So you get to see the inside of a lot of operations, right? You get to see the inside of a lot of companies, sit with these executives. And what I've found is at the heart of it, even in the nonprofit space, because I had nonprofit clients, at the, at the heart of it, companies are just there to make money. Like the, you, you can try to sugarcoat it, talk. I don't care if you're a nonprofit. You can sit there talking about you. You have all these benevolent goals and your corporate philanthropy and da, 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 da. You can have all that stuff that you do on the side. But at the end of the day, companies are not there to help you fill, fulfill your hopes and dreams. They're not there to help you build your career. No, no one goes and no, there's no business owner that says, you know what? You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to risk my financial future and stay up all night building a business so that Michelle can have an amazing. No. Like, I'm sorry to bro- break the romantic. They're not saying that. Companies exist to make money. Now, if you, in the process of doing, if, if you can help them make money and in the process of that, you get your, you know, your goals accomplished and that kind of stuff, great. They'll rock with you. But I guarantee you, as soon as you stop making that company money, your your importance drops, right? So in every company, there's almost a river, which I call the money line. There's a river of things going through the company. 
And the closer you are to that, that, that assembly line, that river of things that really makes the money flow in the company, the higher you're going to get paid. So it's not that, not that everybody in the company isn't important and they have a role to play. I'm just saying your proximity to this line is going to affect you know, your, your, your compensation. Right? And when I say compensation, I'm talking about more than just your salary. I'm talking about vacation. I'm talking about stock options. I'm talking about your ability to make your own decisions, your autonomy. I'm talking about your whole compensation package, right? So that's what I'm talking about when you talk about the money line. So what I encourage people to do, especially here in 2022, is wherever you're working, right? Wherever you're working right now, even if you're an entrepreneur, think about the things, right? And I'll, I'll, I'll do the, the, the two-sided thing. If you're in a company, you need to start thinking about the things that really contribute to the money line in this company. What is it that really makes this company tick? This is why a receptionist, as important as he or she is, as important as they are to be in the front-facing part of the business, they're not going to get paid the same amount as the top salesperson who's connecting with clients. Crucial job, right? Cru I mean, the, the, the receptionist at, at, at my office, I mean, these they're 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 amazing they they're bilingual you can't get it down here in latin america you can't get a job as a receptionist in any decent place unless you speak at minimum two languages fluently so these are amazing smart people but they're not going to get paid as much as the top salesperson who is bringing in you know a million dollars two million dollars on a client you know each month it's just not going to happen because this person is just happens to be closer to the money line, right? So that's kind of the way I look at it. So I'm encouraging everyone out there to go out and think about the skills that you want to get, that you need to get to get yourself closer to that money line. On the entrepreneur side, it's the same kind of way. If you're saying you're an entrepreneur, and I mean a real entrepreneur, not the Instagram entrepreneur. It's another joke from yesterday. Not If you're out there calling yourself a CEO, you know, chief executive officer, but there are no other executive officers in your organization, Chances are you're probably not a, you know, you're probably not an entrepreneur. You might be a freelancer, a big freelancer, fine, but you're not really an entrepreneur, entrepreneur. But for the entrepreneur, entrepreneurs out there, it's the same thing. Think about the, the business that you're building and what is the actual money line that's running through it. You want to make sure that you and your top people are spending more time on those tasks and you're delegating things that don't really contribute that much to the money line, right? You want to make sure you can put more of your time, more people's valuable, more of the high value people's time into pushing the things that are on that money line versus spending time on the skills that are, you know, kind of peripheral out there. So that's, that's, that's my take on what people need to do with skills and money for now. Position yourself to have an advantage by understanding what matters most to the business. Let's review three select exercises down and list the first area of focus to be finding the money line. One activity is to read the company's financial statements, especially the accompanying notes, if you work for a public company or have access as an insider. Another finding of the money line option is reading the message from the company's CEO and management's discussions of what they think matters to shareholders. Dallin specifically directs the reader to pay attention to what leadership celebrates and what topics they deflect from discussing. Another suggestion that Dallin shares is to listen to interviews on podcasts and other media interviews by the company's executives. Please pay attention to the conversation themes and their responses to pointed questions about what the company is doing now and what plans are in the works. A second area of focus is joining the money line. I want to focus on the common practice of switch and jump where you can move closer to the money line by joining another team or even a different company. Dallin outlines additional joining the money line paths in the book, No Boss, Only Clients. If permissible, I challenge you to understand the decision maker's professional background, experiences, and philosophies impacting your ability to join the money line. If you perceive that you're not gaining access for reasons not associated with your skills, seek context to your perception of the circumstances. Identify the lesson and focus on strategic positioning. Sometimes you have to not only shake up your comfort zone and position yourself to increase your earnings and strengthen your area of expertise. Aim for your next steps to prevent severing connections to professional associations that you have worked to develop. Demonstrate the courage to work through any organizational structural barriers limiting your exposure. The question to keep asking yourself during your money line assessment to ensure your self-appraisal 
matches the market value is, where can your current and soon to be master skills be of use to more directly generate shareholder value on the money line? As you prepare to go heavy on adding your sauce, strategizing your alignment with the money line is time well spent on defining what skills will position you to experience that will keep you on track to performing well. The skills you choose, a machine should not be able to duplicate, and they can help you identify opportunities that transfer along other money lines in different industries. Like a well-crafted sauce, our career skills take time to cultivate and develop. I invite you to join the Skills Recharge conversation by sharing your experiences in the comments. Remember to extend grace to yourself during this exercise. Let's learn from each other.